humans of the cardboard welcome back to just nuts guys today we're taking a look at legendary duelist duels from the deep we're about a week away uh from this actually dropping in the tcg i want to talk about implications to the metagame there's not a ton here but there are some pretty interesting things that i feel like are worth mentioning and we'll uh we'll be digging into that today so <clears throat> Pretty much uh, the legendary duelist sets, they only support three duelists nowadays instead of like five or six like it was before. Um, but they're able to give like seven whole cards uh, in terms of new support to every character, which is huge. Seven cards is absolutely huge. The three characters here are Mako Tsunami, uh, Sky Zizen, and Reginald, or Reginald Castle and or Nash, whatever you want to call him. Whatever. Uh, so Sharks, Marine Cess, and like Mako Tsunami's like Umi deck are the three things we're looking at here. So let's start off with Mako Tsunami. There's there's like literally nothing. <laughs> I mean, as far as his support specifically, it's like very, very rogue stuff. I, I do think his deck becomes playable uh, in, in the sense that like you could go to a locals, but I don't think at a regional you'd have as much success with it. But like they have some powerful cards. The Jellyfish card gets them uh, access to Umi, or at least getting Umi into the grave. Uh, and searching you another card. Um, you have stuff like the Doom Kraken, which is a pretty cool extender. Uh, Ocean Dragon Lord Kairushin. This card's a pretty nasty floodgate for sure. But a lot of people, a lot of decks in the metagame are just like maining Droplet anyway. So a lot of people just have main deck outs to this. Um, regardless. Uh, and then other than that, it's like the, the Fish Sonar card's a pretty good search card. And yeah, I mean, like, they're fine. Uh, it, but it, it's it's still too clunky. You have to play, like, three copies of, like, Bricks just to kind of, like, get to this guy. And usually you're not ending on too much else on top of him. Maybe one or two other interruptions. But very, very beatable, even in its best hands. So, uh, yeah, like, it's fine. Uh, from there, you move to the Shark stuff. I think the stuff is a little more interesting. I think generically, this stuff becomes the most interesting for sure. So Abyss Shark here is a really nasty extender. Jumps on the board if you control water and then searches you any level 3, 4, or 5 fish monster from deck to hand. That could be stuff like Silent Angler to immediately jump on the field. Or that could be something like the other new shark, Crystal Shark. Um, this card, same thing. If it's um, on uh, in hand or in the graveyard and it, you control a water, jumps on the field. The one important thing is to keep in mind, though, for restrictions is Abyss Shark locks you into waters for the rest of the turn. Crystal Shark locks you into Exceeds. That's the bigger problem with Crystal Shark because in other water decks, like you might want to consider splashing this engine in, specifically Abyss Shark maybe with something like uh, like the Silent Angler. It, it's, it's a free rank four. Right, like, and if you want to play the Crystal Shark, or, and you want to save it for like the end of your turn, like, boom, like easy rank five play at the end to make the other new guy. But it's a cool, it's a cool engine. There's there's not a ton of water decks running around right now. Um, we'll see tier elements in the next format. I doubt this is uh, the right way to go. You know, start playing tier element stuff locks you out of, into water, so you wouldn't be able to make like wind and stuff the turn you do it. So you know, there's definitely some clunkiness there but i think about like atlantean mermails is another package they already play like the frog package to get negates like why not play this to be able to set up a free stealth kraken or uh something like the new rank five so there, there's definitely some utility there uh for sure <clears throat> after that you get the new rank five this card's pretty good uh it, i believe it's non-targeting uh Let's see. Yeah, so it, it non-target, non-targeting like takes an opponent's monster and attaches it to itself as material, which is pretty good. Non-targeting removal that like doesn't even send it to grave, so like your opponent doesn't have access to it in grave, they can't search it if it gets sent back to deck. It's actually a really powerful removal uh, card. You do have to play another uh, like number monster in your extract to make this work, though. But I think all all in all, it's pretty. It's a pretty powerful, just simple like interruptive card um gives you that option if you want to go for the rank five play with the shark package but pretty cool uh then you have uh nash knight this card's also pretty interesting um i think I, I think people need to mess around and see what the best uh like realm to to mess around with this is because this card lets you detach a, a material from him to special summon from your extra deck uh one number exceed monster that has a number between 101 and 107 in its name Using this face-up card, you control his material, but destroy it during the next end phase. Um, Street has an exceed summon, all that stuff. Uh, the cool part is this guy just overlays on top of 
uh, Nash Knight uh, for free, and then you trigger this. So I, you, we need to go through, we need to look up the 101 to 107 targets, figure out uh, what the best targets are for that, but it's going to take, uh, you know, it's going to take a couple of uh, extra deck slots kind of allocated to this, but I'm sure there are some decent targets there. Uh, and then you get to the Marine Set stuff. So that's it for like really for the, the, the good shark cards. Um, again, like I don't, not a lot, a lot of decks are facilitating rank five. So it would just kind of be the shark package. And do you really want to play three to four extra deck slots? That's literally solely just for resolving abyss shark. I don't know. Uh, you can still keep it simple if you want. Just play the stealth crag and maybe play the Nash Knight. Maybe play, I don't know. I guess silent honor arc is funny and <laughs> facilitates Zeus. Uh, but you would be locked into waters if you used the Abyss Shark. So you got to you gotta pick your poison there. Um, and then you move to Marine Cess. I think this one, as far as uh, all three of these decks purely, uh, has the highest ceiling here as far as being a meta-relevant deck. For sure. I mean, I made a video talking about what I wanted to see for the Marine Cess support. And they did literally everything except for maybe like, re like a new trap that's like a removal trap. Um, other than that, uh, they gave us literally everything. A level 4 extender to facilitate Bahamut or uh, Stealth Crag in place. Awesome. Extra interruption. Um, Sleepy Maiden. Another extender. It's fine. It kind of facilitates the spell and trap negate, so we'll take it. Uh, Marine says Dive. This card is crazy. This was the number one thing we needed was a spell that actually um, was freely searchable off of Sea Angel and actually was like an engine card. This card's amazing. It's just Monster Reborn. Sometimes it's Emergency Teleport. Insane. Coral Triangle, another huge card. Uh, an, an extra deck monster that gets you two interruptions. If you didn't even open the trap, you'd be able to make this. This can search you the trap very easily and provide follow-up. Huge card for the deck. Aqua Argonaut, this card's pretty good as well. It gives you a bounce. Uh, not a quick effect bounce, there's some main phase bounce. But it's also a spell and trap negate if it is equipped with a... Uh, uh, a marine cess monster. So by using Sleepy Maiden, you would equip uh, an extract monster and grave to it to give it the spell and trap negate. So you have one card combos that new that end you on the spell and trap negate, a uh, wave in hand, and two follow ups aside from that. Absolutely insane. Uh, I guess it's worth mentioning also Forbidden Droplet's really the only great generic uh, reprint in the set. That's nice. Hopefully, I mean, it's hard to say. We keep getting like droplet reprints because it's such high rarity and hard to get in all the sets it's reprinted in. It's still really expensive. So, hopefully, this helps. If, if you're a budget player, I still don't have droplet, so I would love for this to like keep dropping, but we'll see. <clears throat> but yeah, all in all, I think Marine Test has like legit tier two potential. I've talked about this. I think this deck is better than Salamangrates now. Uh, and Salamangrates are like people call salads like tier two or high level rogue, especially with circle at three and all their other tools. But I think this deck is kind of like salads, but I just think it has a higher ceiling. It, it more consistently, super easily gets to one to two interruptions off one card and two follow ups. Salads will get like two follow ups, but sometimes like not even get you a trap depending on the hand. Uh, and so they just. I don't know. They grind really hard, but so does this deck. I just think this deck's ceiling is higher. Your monsters are bigger. You have access to sweet removal like uh, like the new girl, Argonaut, to just bounce extra deck monsters. It's good. Like I, I don't know what else to say about it. The deck's just... I, I really think this deck is good. I'm really excited to mess around with it competitively. But that's mostly it. Um, I don't think this this Legendary Duelist is quite as good as the Wind one. I just think it had, at least competitively speaking, the Wind one had your Leerless, which were like literally part of one of the best decks in the game, if not the best deck with uh, Leerless, Tri Brigade, and even Pure Leerless was like a pretty good rogue deck. Uh, on top of that, you had uh, Speedroids becoming a much better rogue deck. Um, some people still mess around with them. They're, 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 they're kind of like a sleeper pick. They're definitely rogue though. Um, and then you had Barone de Fleur, like a crazy generic card. And now we're even seeing stuff like some of the other cards see play. Uh, the, the one little Synchron, the Fleur, uh, not Fleur Synchron. It's like, a, it's, it's like a new Synchron from that set, I believe, that's seeing play in uh, like the Synchro, like the crazy Synchro kitchen sink builds. Um, so the, a couple generic cards that are just getting thrown into other stuff. And obviously Barone is just such a generic bomb extra deck card uh, that's seen a ton of play, still does. And yeah, I, I feel like this set just misses that generic card. It felt like Mako Tsunami stuff should have probably had one random just like awesome water card uh, or something. You know what I mean? I, I don't really know. Or maybe maybe it should have been uh, shark stuff. 
earth sharks uh nash's stuff with the sharks like maybe they should have gotten like a generic awesome new exceed their new exceeds are fine but they're not like oh generic bomb like it's a generic rank four super easy to make it's a rank five and it's a solid eruption but like rank fives are not easy to make there's not a lot of decks that just pump out rank fives uh at all so i don't know there's just no generic bomb in this set i would say and we're going to get the next set, which the Ashizu stuff seems to be generically splashable. Seems to be the most hype stuff there. But that set has, like, the other archetypes are so much more let down than this. Like, I would argue in the next set, when you look at uh, the Earth Legendary Duels, between Amazonas, Morphtronic, and Ashizu stuff, Ashizu stuff being splashed in certain decks is awesome. And that that's great. That's going to see some competitive play. But as far as pure decks go, I would say all three of those, even with their new support, could arguably be worse than Mako Tsunami. And then, like, Sharks are obviously better than Mako Tsunami, and obviously, uh, Marine Cess is better than Mako, is better than Sharks, and, like, you climb up the ladder. Uh, so it's weird. Konami's been weirdly inconsistent. I wish that these sets had been as good as the Wind one. I, I'm not complaining, though, because they are still better than what they were before the Wind Legendary Duelist. Um, but it's not not perfect. So hopefully the next Legendary Duels after the Earth one will be something like either Fire or Light. Those really seem to be the only two attributes they haven't gone after. If they do, hopefully they get back on the train. I'm making stuff good. Volcanic support on, on the horizon, hopefully. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, for everything that I think matters is going to have any effect. There's really not a ton of effects, mostly rogue stuff. But if you are a fan of some of these few decks that will be able to take advantage of these cards, if you're a Mermail player, if you're a, a Shark player, if you're a Marine Cess player, uh, technically even Frogs. I've seen people play like Paleo Frogs, but then just splash a small uh, uh, Shark engine. Technically, you could just add Abyss Shark to that engine and kind of just keep moving. But, you know neither here nor there we'll see um but yeah i'm out of here thank you so much for watching as always guys let me know down below your thoughts on the set overall like um not just on how it affects the meta but also just like relative to uh the other legendary duelist where do you put this one i think i give this one like i want to give it like a six and a half maybe a seven at best but six feels a little low seven almost feels a little high i think six and a half is right in the sweet spot the marine says stuff is good the shark stuff is fine i don't think it fully solved like the, the extenders are awesome the two main deck sharks are awesome the extra cards are like fine but we have kraken and bahamut like we'd rather just churn those cards out rather than make the new ones most scenarios anyway so it, it kind of okay some of the cards and then for the mako stuff like it's fine they picked mako i didn't expect anything crazy maybe one awesome generic card for waters to kind of be the the barone de fleur of this set we didn't get it um so it's like okay again there so like i just felt like marine says was an absolute hit the other two kind of just meh but yeah uh that's that's where we're at so let me know your thoughts down below i'd love to hear that have a conversation down there and uh yeah i'm out of here thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video peace